Welcome to the Best Of series. This group of shows will highlight the best of some of my most popular topics from this season and prior seasons. As we round the end of 2023, setting yourself up to not get hella overwhelmed by the holiday trifecta isn't always easy. So buckle up, grab your favorite note-taking device, and get ready to take action toward the change you want to see. See you inside the episode. Welcome to We Ain't Normal. My name is Charmaine Fuller, and I'm an everyday mom sharing how I navigate my ADHD brain. Each week, we share tools, inspiration, and resources to help you uncover how to reclaim your time, energy, and focus. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Now on to our show. Like I would contemplate like just bouncing. So how did I move from that to having a family where there is more communication, more flow? Is it perfect? No. Because if you follow me on social media, there are some days where I'm like, what the is going on with this household? But the timing in which I felt really stressed out has now further and further in between any bouts. And so what I don't teach is perfection. Because if you have kids, Life, perfection is not even a word that should touch the essence of your vocabulary. What you're looking for is progress. Did you move versus it being every 90 days? Now, wow, every six months you don't have to blow up? Like, wow, that is progress. Even if it goes from three months to four months. Okay, now we're starting to get progress. I teach progress. I teach grace. I teach you being able to have that flow. And that some months it's going to be great. Other months is going to be absolutely crazy. Like back to school time is absolutely crazy. I don't care how much I prepare. I don't care how many binders I get in order. I swear before all things holy on the first day of school, I feel like a chicken with her head cut off. I can't find nothing. Can't nobody find nothing. Nobody. And my son is schooled at home. We can't find logins. We don't know where the the laptop is that he's been playing all, all summer. Like all the stuff that I thought I prepared for is not prepared for, you know, ain't no groceries. Like, it's just like, wait a minute. I thought I was doing good. (laughs) Like I was doing so well. So there are just seasons where your life is going to be crazier than normal. And so I want you to give yourself that grace that even if you block your time, your family got other plans sometimes. And sometimes you have to step in, in ways that you necessarily didn't anticipate. So what I had to do, and this was completely counterintuitive. This felt like somebody was taking my eyelashes out. And like plucking them out one by one, I had to slow down. That feels like torture to a mom that has a to-do list of like at least easily 20 to 50 things a day on paper and in her head. Mainly it's in her head, but there's a list of things that have to be done. And for you to tell me to slow down, like you don't know my life. Like how am I supposed to slow? Where, where do you, where would you propose I slow down at? Where do you propose I find this 15 minutes that you're talking about for me to slow down and be clear? So I want to break it down like this. On your worksheets, if you're here, if you're not here, if you're live, if you sign up to my newsletter, when this episode drops live, then in the newsletter, I will be um, sending this out. Also, um, remember, if you live, I take this off tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. So you want to get on the list so you can know when it comes out. Anywho, on the list. Clarify, getting clear about what's going on now. So simplify is also about setting and applying boundaries. Not setting boundaries, because ladies, we are really good at setting a boundary. I can set a boundary, but let somebody come with me with them little cute brown circle eyes and go, but I can't do it myself. Or I really need your help. It's like, no, this it, I'm not done yet. Like you're gonna have to come back. I would set when he was younger, when his older brother were younger. I would set the microwave timer before I even knew about egg timer. I would set the timer on the microwave and my older son would sit in front of the microwave and like he would just be waiting like to come and like talk and grab me. (laughs) So setting and applying those boundaries, applying the boundaries. A lot of people talk time management. Time ain't real. That's a whole nother conversation. But because we are within the constructs of it, what really affects your time is your energy. If you go into a thing and you're lethargic, you just don't feel like that's something that is draining your energy. How can you get rid of that thing, whether by delegating it to another family member or outsourcing it if you can? I want you ladies, if your thing is I can't have Kroger's or Instacart pick my groceries because I like for my stuff to look a certain way, 
release that. Their C plus is better than your A. And I want you to do that with your family as well. Their C plus is better than your A. Why? Because you didn't have to give A effort. And there are just some things that you should just let be. And it's okay. If it's not a life or death medical type of situation and they don't do it how you do it, be happy with that. Who cares? Let it go. (laughs) So that is the beauty of victory journaling mapping. And going back to look over the things that you created throughout your week um, to help you to stay accountable and focused for that. The more you begin to notice, like I said, your awesomeness, the more joy you're going to bring into your life, the more joy you bring into your life, the more joy you project out into the lives of others. Remapping helps you, helps to keep you from feeling like you are perpetually dropping the ball. If you're like, oh my God, I can, you know, oh my gosh, I never feel like I finish anything. I never feel like I'm enough in this or that I've dropped the ball with the kids. I'm perpetually running behind. It keeps you from looking at all of the shit you think you're doing wrong to help you see things that you're doing right and realizing that you're not really all that behind. I think a lot of the times, I know for me, the reason why I feel like I'm behind 99% of the time is because I'm either comparing my current situation to an older version of me who was in her twenties and had no children, or I'm comparing myself to someone on social or maybe just in the circle of awesome women that I know and what she's doing in her life. And so then it always feels like I'm perpetually dropping the ball in my life. And so victory journaling, journaling mapping helps me. I know I'm using the words interchangeably, um, but it helps me to, give notice to my subconscious mind, my conscious mind that you are not behind. Everything that you're doing is really in alignment with where your life is right now. Even though this is not what you want to be doing, everything you're doing is in alignment with where your life is right now. And so you are taking the right steps. Having that validation, having that in your face helps me to not get too caught up in comparisons and judgments because I'm really focused on running my own race and what is it that I'm doing? What have I already done to improve myself, my life? And it's nothing that is too small or too big. Like I said, as simple as um, I didn't go off. You know, my husband came at me sideways. I didn't go off. I show love, right? <laughs> Um, I'm proud of me for, like I said before, making dinner. I'm proud of me for, um, maybe moving my body today. You know, I'm proud of me for closing that deal. Like you like most people don't celebrate themselves for that. Like I ask women, so what are you going to do once you hit, um, I have another podcast on life dumping. So, okay, you reach this goal or you make really good progress within the next 30 days. How are you going to celebrate the action you took? And they get silent. They're like, okay, well, it's a financial goal and I don't want to spend more money. I'm like, you don't have to spend more money to celebrate yourself. It could be um, taking a walk by yourself. It could be um, going to the park. It could be playing, having an unhampered game night with your kids whatever celebration looks like for you. You know, I think a lot of the times when we pull into like, how do I celebrate myself? It, it, you always feel like it has to cost you a big bag of money in order for you to say, I have done a great job. And sometimes the only thing you need in that holy instant is for you to go, I am so proud of you. Like looking yourself in the mirror and going, I am so proud of you. You are doing a really good job with the skill set and resources you have, it's going to get better. You're doing a great job. And having the victory mapping piece of it, being able to go in and tell yourself on a daily basis, look, this is not about being perfect. This is about creating a habit that is going to support your mental sanity, your growth, and your mindset. It's about celebrating you right now. You want to stop like you want to stop feeling like you're always dropping the ball and that 
you're always two steps behind or that something is missing, start to celebrate because life feels so heavy and stressful and overwhelming right now. We're, we're looking for that quick weekend getaway. We're looking for that spa day. We're looking for the thing that we think is going to give us the most instantaneous relief. And then we say, and then I'll be able to focus and move back. But if you know, like I know, that if you don't have this foundational piece set into place, you can take the weekend away. You can take the spa day. You can um, have a weekend or a day of silence. And then when you come back, things feel even more heavy than when you decided to pull back from life and from things surrounding it. So having that clarity and keeping that clarity consistently checking in with yourself. Are you on the path that you say you want to be on? Are you intentionally showing up in places that you know are going to take you to the next level? Are you continuously doing the the menial, the things that aren't necessarily taking you anywhere, but they're just things to do? Is your schedule feeling like you're in control or is it feeling like you're being controlled? Having the clarity of those pieces, knowing what's going on, asking yourself, how am I showing up in life? How is how are things working out for me just in general? Having that clarity is so important and it's so underrated. So, you know, if you're feeling like you're still putting out fires, even though you have this beautiful planner with all of these beautiful pieces to it then that just means you're not, you're still missing clarity somewhere. And clarity is not a destination. It's a journey. You know, I wish I could tell you that, oh my gosh, I came up with my clarity pieces and, you know, my life is so fabulous. Like I don't even have to think about like my next steps because I've written down this clarity plan and it's great. No, again, this season has been all about things shift and change and being aware of what's going on and knowing when you need to pivot, but you can't do that if you're not consistently checking in with yourself, if you're not consistently um, showing up for yourself and showing up to create the life that you want to have. The second piece, you know, so that's, that's the first thing. Clarity is queen. Um, It allows your life to flow. It keeps you from focusing on the wrong things And it helps you to know when you need to pivot and when you can really say yes to a thing and when you can really say no to a thing. The other thing is traveling your own path. When you're clear, it's easier for you to travel your own path, not to get caught up in what you think other people think you should do. It helps you to stay out of the people pleasing mode. I want you to take some space. And get clear and create some form of order. It's not going to be perfect. Um, You don't have to take an entire weekend to do it. You can take a few minutes each day. In fact, that's how I recommend. If you, if life is feeling really overwhelming right now, me telling you to, oh my gosh, take a weekend and just sit and plan out your life. That feels overwhelming. That feels almost impossible, especially if you already feel like your life is going hella fast and that stopping or slowing down would freak you out. What I really suggest you do is taking those life areas that I that I mentioned toward the beginning of the show and write it down and like ask yourself, you know, how does this area feel now? How do I want it to feel Um what can I do? What? How can I show up in a way that allows me to hit those feelings on a more consistent basis, right? So when you, sh- when you ask yourself those types of questions um, before you engage with something, what is my intention for this activity? Where do you find yourself the most drained? And if it's a place where you can outsource or delegate, by all means, do that that this is going to take time and being willing to give yourself that time. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and it freed you to see your life a bit differently. Make sure to check out those show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's episode with all the important links and resources. If you want weekly exclusive episodes, 
with me personally, make sure to sign up for my Simplify My Life newsletter. I'd love to know what you enjoyed about this episode, so leave a review to let me know how I can continue to support you. So mama, I want you to know, you're doing much better than you think. You're further than you believe, and you're worthy to have it all. So until next time, stay weird and keep doing you, babe.